He's given you life. What more could you ask for? What else could you ask for that could trump life? My goodness. Woo, we got to learn how to be thankful. Got to learn how to be thankful. <laughs> Woo. Lord, I prayed for the house and I didn't get the house. You didn't know five years down the road that house was going to burn up. No, he will just God. Oh, I didn't get the car. You didn't know that car was going to get in the wreck and paralyze you. No, you he's a good God. Woo. My goodness. Woo. My goodness. Somebody did me wrong. Yeah, but somebody else won't go do you worse. Mm -mm -mm. Learn. Learn. Glory to God. Got to be thankful. Got to be thankful for what you have. Mm -hmm. Man, some people will worship God all night just to have a place like this. In a country, another country, they'd be so happy. Y'all got two bathrooms? Oh, it's so much to be happy for. No, no, we, we don't. Mm -mm -mm. Lord of God. I'm not talking much. I'm talking about the body of Christ in its totality of their understanding of their God and how much he has blessed you already. My goodness. Woo! My husband left me. Yeah, but you didn't know he was going to kill you. He's not treating me right, but I'm trying to teach you to trust me. I'm trying to get you to put your trust in me. Now be faithful to him. See, it ain't unto him, it's unto God. If you could get that. I'm trying to show you something. I'm trying to get something to you. My goodness. Hallelujah. Ah, oh, God. We gotta be thankful. He said, in everything, in everything, give him thanks. He didn't say for everything. He said, in everything, give him thanks and give him glory. Give him praise. Acknowledge me, he's saying. We come here together today. This is, this is more important than anything that you could possibly think you need to do. Just can I get to the place of the gathering today? It's a mindset. It's a mindset. I would not destroy if I could find five righteous. I would not destroy if I could find an intercessor. Just one. Just one that would entreat me on behalf of the body of Christ. If I could find one. It tells you the power of unity. It tells you the power of your prayers. Apollonia, your prayers can ascend to God. See, we, we think that's nothing. No, we're talking about the creator of everything that you have a direct access to. See, the human mind can't even wrap around that. It, because if it did, we would pray more. We would have understanding that God hears me. And my prayer counts. My prayer ain't no more powerful than yours, Dejan. Man, my prayer ain't no more powerful. You can touch his heart just like I can. He can speak to you just like he speak to me. There's no difference in, see, there's no variance in God. No one person is greater than the other. 
But what he wants to know is how intimate you want to be with me. How much do you want to expose your heart to me? Mm. Mm. How much will you come under my authority? You can't yield authority unless you're under authority. I mean, we, I don't want us to take for granted what we're doing here and how important it is to attend prayer. No matter what you're going through, no matter what kind of day you had, I'm getting to prayer. I get to come to a place where there are other believers because my prayer is powerful. It counts. God is entrusting me to speak what's in his heart. Because I've been in his presence. Sarah, your prayers can change a nation. Right. See, on, see, we want to, we, we got to believe that. I will not destroy if I could find one intercessor. If I could just find one who would entreat me on behalf of a rebellious people. Sometimes I just I can feel it like, oh, I don't, I don't count, but I'll come. But my prayer don't really mean nothing. I'm, I'm struggling with some things, yeah. You know, my prayer don't really count. Yolanda, your prayers count. See, this is the thing we got to get. He said, you come boldly now to the throne of grace. You don't come in there tiptoeing. You come boldly. Into his presence. I have a relationship. I've left my flesh out there. I'm not sin conscious now. Of my old nature. Man see this is how you can come into his presence. Now I can pray the will of the father. And when I do that all of my needs are taken care of. See we missed the protocol. Of how to pray. And then. What you're going through, somebody else is going through something worse than you. He said, pray for them. That's what we won't do. Mm, mm, mm. I just keep hearing people don't think their prayers count. Absolutely, they count. He said, pray, believe that you have received. The will of God. Now that prayer will be answered. I need a car. I need a job. We praying them prayers. Help me. While you crying, somebody else is praying for you. But you can't pray for someone else because you're crying for you. You cannot be selfish. I told y'all how Satan gets us is through our super intelligence. No, he gets us through our lack of knowledge of him. Paul, the Bible says study to show yourself approved. I'm going to get to Paul. But you need to study the word. But you also need to study your adversary. Paul, teacher, Paul, He knew God. I mean, he he knew Satan. He was working for Satan. Paul was. So Satan works against the believer. What was Paul doing in pretense of the church? He was going after what? Believers. In who? Yeshua. So he was working for him. He was an agent for him. Paul, Revelation Paul, 
revelatory Paul. So he, he knew the enemy. Pray. That you, he said, don't be ignorant. Because I know something of him. And he was ignorant to the Mashiach. Who he was. This is how he get us. Because we don't know who he is. Paul was pulling people out of their homes. Families. He was opposing Christ. He was telling Paul, who persecuted me? Remember when he got knocked off that horse? He said, you persecuted. Y'all got to have a Damascus moment. See, he thought he was doing the right thing, the will of God. He thought he was. But it won't. That's right. So he was working for him. So we can't be, you got to study this enemy. You don't study him, it's going to get you. Go to Matthew. Let's find out how he do this. I'm going to make sure y'all not ignorant. I'm going to make sure y'all fully equipped. <laughs> first things first, love. I'm going to make sure we're operating it so we ain't deceived. Okay, let me show you something you might not have seen before. Let's go here. Matthew chapter 4. We got to go quick tonight because we got the app to release. So follow with me. Come on. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. Very familiar. Matthew chapter 4 at verse 1. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus was led, guided by the Holy Spirit, mm. into the wilderness, the desert, to be tempted, tested, and tried by the devil. Verse 2. Hold on. Not people. Not situations. Tested and tried by who? <coughs> Plain and simple. Okay? All right. Verse 2. And he went without food for 40 days and 40 nights. And later he was hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are God's son. Command these stones to be made loaves of bread. Stop. He made him question who he is. Here he goes again. If you be the son of God. If. Y'all got to watch that. Little word. Two little letters. Change your whole direction of your life. Sound just like had God said. But go ahead. Mm. Verse 4. But he replied. It has been written, man shall not live and be upheld and sustained by bread alone, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Verse 5. Then the devil took him into the holy city and placed him on a turret, a pinnacle, gable of the temple sanctuary. Took you to a familiar place. Someplace you know. Go ahead now. Familiar. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And he said to him, if you are the son of God. Here we go again. Questioning your identity. Mm -hmm. mm. Go ahead. If you are the son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, he will give his angels charge over you. And they will bear you up on their hands, lest you strike your foot against a stone. What's he doing here? One, he's making them question himself. Then he's pulling them out of his purpose. Mm, oh, he's attempting to. The same thing, the same, this, this you too. Okay, this you too. Come on. Verse 7, 
Jesus said to him, on the other hand, it is written also, you shall not tempt, test thoroughly, or try exceedingly the Lord your God. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. Trying to get him to rebel. All right. Y'all know. Yeah. He's trying to associate him with his flesh. <laughs> he got some, but that's not who he is. You got some, but that's not who you is. Well, that ain't right English, but who you is. But go ahead. Proper. All right, come on. <laughs> Verse 8. Again, the devil took him up on a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory, the splendor, magnificence, preeminence, and excellence of them. And Stop. He said, I'm going to take you to a high place where you don't think you should be. Or you don't think you can actually ascend to. I'm going to take you. <laughs> exactly. That's really good. And also knowledge. Mm -hmm. Amen. Come on. Mm -hmm. You see, I'm going to take you exceedingly beyond what you think you can do. Come on, we're going to work this thing. Oh, come on, do this. Come on. And he said to him, these things all taken together, I will give you if you will prostrate yourself before me. That means lay flat. Come on. And do homage and worship me. Hold on, stop right there. You, you need to read that again. Verse 9. Mm -hmm. And he said to him, these things all taken together. These good gifts. I will give you if you will prostrate yourself before me and do homage and worship me. He said the best for last. Because that's what he really wants. Is your worship. I know you heard it before, but you need to hear it again. <laughs> if you would yield yourself to me, if you would yield your heart to me, because you only can worship in spirit and truth. But wait a minute. He, he's promising me these things, but he's the father of lies. Father means what? Source. So he is the source of where lies come from. So it can't be the truth. <laughs> it can't be the truth. He, I'm the father of lies. That means I'm the source of it. Anything that you are the source of, you sustain. Okay. Ain't that crazy? It's called like child support. They still make you. You are... The father. <laughs> Look at the eyes, Maury. Look at the eyes. <laughs> you are the father. So, oh, it's going to be good. Come on. Continue. Verse 10. Then Jesus said to him, be gone, Satan. For it has been written, you shall worship the Lord your God. And him alone shall you serve. So worship is serving. Serving is worship. Who wants to serve? Because that's part of your worship. They got people don't want to don't want to serve. They got people don't want to worship. It's the tsunami is just one and the same. See, we missed this. Listen to this. Satan comes to tempt us just like he tempted Jesus with the appetites of our flesh, food, sex, power, money, dominion. Some of us in that right now. Some of us got to make some choices. And it involves some of those. 
Dominion means it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's where the domain of the king is. I have dominion, have dominion over this earth, over the God. Okay. I have a right. Now watch this. It was Jesus, though. It was Jesus, y'all. It's Jesus. Jesus did not come up with some supernatural, you know, mode to resist the devil. <laughs> he went to the source of all human strength. He went. He went to the source of all human strength. When it comes to defeating the enemy. He went to where it is written. In the word of God. And won against the devil. I didn't see him do anything. Except speak. And you won't speak. He didn't do nothing supernatural. He went to the supernatural source, but he didn't do nothing supernatural. I'm talking about in this. Okay. Hold on. It's hard to even understand that the word fasted. Mm -mm. That's, that's, that's a mind bender. And these only lead by what? And fasting. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Oh, man. Listen to this. He won against the devil in his most weakened state. Physically, emotionally, and mentally. I'm trying to help you. I can't take it no more. Y'all get me back there. He was in the wilderness for 40 days. He won't in the house. He was in the open elements, rocks, scorpions and snakes. He was in the he was in the wilderness physically, emotionally and mentally. He was there. Here we go. In the comfort of our own homes. <sighs> Am I pulling the veil back? Yeah. I'm trying to get us not to be ignorant. Because he's going to come for that ignorance. Okay, hold on, here we go. He was physically, emotionally, and mentally weakened. <laughs> the word of God caused him still to prevail. Prevail over, uh oh, the adversary. Give me my words. <laughs> prevail means, <laughs> prevail means, check this out. It means proven more powerful than the opposing forces. In other words, victory. One, two, three, four people clapped on that. <laughs> yes, I can. In his most weakened state, y'all know I can't take it no more. Y'all know that state. My money ran out. I, I can't take it no more. They bought the foreclose. I can't take it no more. You know that mental state. Okay. He won't act right. She won't act right. You'll know that mentally. I'm done. But the word caused him to prevail. In his most weakened state. Prevail means proven more powerful. Proven more powerful than the opposing forces. 
Oh my God. Oh, y'all gonna get some help in here. The enemy's gonna be mad. Y'all pray for me. The word causes you. See, when we were talking about last Tuesday, we were saying that you won and you have victory. This is that prevailing word that is more powerful than the opposing forces that are trying to cut you down. Proven. Proven. Not hope. Proven. Prevail. Jesus, my God. That's all right. It's powerful. So we should use the same method that Jesus used. My question is, <laughs> do you know the word? He didn't do anything else but the word. <laughs> he spoke the word only. Yeah, minister. Speaking the word only. Come on. He should. See, no, God gave that to us. That was a prophetic song. But you having a problem connecting to it. Because you think it's just a minister singing. See, and that's what we've been entertained so much in church. Instead of prophetically hearing what the psalmist is really saying for my life. And the moment it becomes real to you. You can have whatsoever you say it. Because now your words come match the will of God. That's the problem. All right, here we go. Woo! God did not die so you could be living a life of luxury. Void of him. Because you won't come to church with $20. You're not going to come to church with $10 million. Because he know your heart. But you'll say, yeah, I will. Okay. Money don't corrupt you it only makes you more what you are it only brings forth your character that's it all right that's it it is true all right see that's what i connect come on let's go deeper let's go deeper let's go deeper all right do you know the word that was what i asked y'all the devil's no problem it tells you he's already defeated. He, he's no problem. He's not a problem. <laughs> They're like, yeah, it is. The problem is your ignorance. That's the problem. Do y'all feel like that's a negative word? Y'all know I'm not calling you dumb. I'm not calling anyone dumb when you're ignorant. That means just a lack of knowledge. But a lot of people take offense to that. I'm ignorant. You just don't know how to do it. Then say you couldn't learn how to do it. Okay. But Paul said, do not be ignorant of his tricks, schemes, and devices. Means that, that you should be studying him. Nobody goes to war without studying their enemy. I mean, that's right. Muhammad Ali, he studied all his opponents. Hours and hours of playback. He knew how when he when he was swing, he knew how far their arm would stick. So he would knew he would not even raise that much energy because he knew how far he had to lean back. So he was conserving his energy instead of going, you know, all the way back like that. You know, he would just go here because I studied. I know how far your reach is. Y'all know how far the enemy reaches. Mm -mm. Here's the antidote to your actions, to the attacks, should I say. Now, I go to you and I say, you know, turn to Zephaniah 2, 3. Or I'll come over here and tell you, go to Philemon, you know, 4, 5. 
We don't even know what that is. Is that old new or old or new testament? We don't even is that by is you making that up? That's not in there. Because you don't know your word. Micah, old new what who what? Because we don't know. Is that old or new? Folks looking at it right now, Googling. Is it old or new testament? They're Googling right now. Mm-hmm. This is how he gets us. Teacher, we be quoting the wrong scripture for the wrong situation. Just like I told y'all on Sunday about using two or three gathering hands. We've been doing the wrong thing that he still ain't showed up. Because you hadn't repented. You haven't restored your brother. That's what that whole verse is about. See, he's been using the wrong. See, and he's counting on you being ignorant. Of that. Just keep quoting it. Just keep touching your neighbor. Ain't no scripture in there. Okay. Said, love your neighbor. That's right. Lay hands suddenly on no one. You trying to go home and find out why you having crazy dreams. Because you've been touching everybody. Shouldn't be doing that. Know them that labor amongst you. All right. Maybe we're going to teach on that too. Hold on. All right. Might sound funny, but it's true. All right, all right. There you go. Too much, too much touching going on. You touching, you got a love spirit. You don't need to be touching nobody. It sure is. There you go. When we understand, listen. We're not, when we don't understand the word, or the context of the scripture, you're going to have the wrong interpretation. And that's what I was showing you about Sunday. So you're going to try to go and use that word. And that's the wrong word for the situation. Mm-hmm. No, but everybody doing this. Jesus knew the exact scripture to use against the devil. He knew the exact one. And the scripture is all powerful. I didn't hear him yelling. And the word put them right in the place. Oh, Paul said this. Put on the whole armor of God. Go to Ephesians 6 1 real quick. I got to be finished in a few minutes. So. Ephesians 6 1. Let's look, let's look at this real quick. Ephesians chapter 6 at verse 1. Yes. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. Oh, excuse me. That's good too, though. 611, sorry. <laughs> or do we need to go there? <laughs> Calls us children. We need to obey. Come on. 611. Ephesians chapter 6 at verse 11. Put on God's whole armor, the armor of a heavy armed soldier, which God supplies, that you may be able successfully to stand up against all the strategies and the deceits of the devil. Mm, some of them. He expects us to stand. He expects us to resist all of them. Handle all of them. And who, who armor is it? And who put it on? Who? Just like God's love. Oh, y'all ain't get it. Come on. Finish. Finish. Verse 12. But we are not wrestling with flesh and blood contending only with physical opponents, but against the despotisms, against the powers, against the master spirits who are the world rulers of this present darkness, against the spirit forces of wickedness in the heavenly, the supernatural sphere. Your battle's not even really on the earth. But yet we find ourselves fighting each other. Mm. <sighs> you mean, who I want to go in here? Who I mean, nah, you mean your prayer is fighting them. Okay, let's, let's continue. Y'all going to get that. Let's continue. Mm. Verse 13. 
Therefore, put on God's complete armor. God's armor. Here we go again. It's not yours. It's God's armor. Thank you, God. Go ahead. That you may be able to resist and stand your ground on the evil day of danger. And having done all the crisis demands <laughs> to stand firmly in your place. Give up. Cave in. Retreat. Stay home. <laughs> yeah, it's one thing to stand, but it's another to stand firm. See, you kind of have to stand firm because of the forces that are coming. And if you stand too close together, your, your, your balance will be off. So you need to stand firmly. You know, horse stance. Okay, I ain't going to mess with y'all. I ain't going to mess with y'all. <laughs> I used to be in the dead, but come on. Let's finish. Verse, four, verse 14. Stand, therefore. Hold your ground. Having tightened the belt of truth mm. around your loins. And having put on the breastplate of integrity and of moral rectitude and right standing with God. Verse 15. Mm -hmm. And having shod your feet in preparation to face the enemy with the firm footed stability, Whew. the promptness and the readiness produced by the good news of the gospel of peace. Oh, my goodness. Verse 16. Yes. Lift up over all the covering shield of saving faith, mm. upon which you can quench all the flaming missiles of the wicked one. Some of them. Oh. Mm. Verse 17. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword that the spirit wields, which is the word of God. Pray at all times. On every occasion, in every season, in the spirit, with all manner of prayer and entreaty. To that end, keep alert and watch with strong purpose and perseverance, interceding in behalf of all the saints, God's consecrated people. Okay. There's your battle plan right there. How come you're not following it? Who is depressed? Mm. Who is not believing? See, won't he do it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll say that. Won't he do it? Yeah, he will, but you won't do nothing. You have to do something. Yes, he will do it. He's able and he can. You're supposed to have prevailing faith. Okay. All right. Here we go. Okay. Let's see here. Let's see what the issue is. Watch this. You don't fight with the armor. You fight with the sword. <laughs> you don't fight with the armor. <laughs> you fight with the word. Y'all gonna get it. This is why you're losing the battle. Because you don't know the word. This is why you can't harness our emotions. You're still fighting the battle, the war with your flesh. And he told you this battle war is not of flesh and blood. That's why you feel the way you feel about the person. You know the person. I ain't got, you know the person. Because you, <laughs> you are in your flesh. And Satan is thinking, you, he's telling you, you're fighting them. They won't do what I say. That's not your fight. Listen, your helmet, <laughs> it's the helmet of salvation, right? You got your helmet, you're saved, right? You got your breastplate. You got your righteousness, right? right? 
You got your, your feet shod, you know, to carry the gospel, right? All right? You got your shield of faith, right? Mm-hmm. You believe. That's what, that's what it is. You believe, right? But you don't know how to fight because you don't have the word. <laughs> you don't know how to fight because you don't have the word. You got all the equipment on, but you don't know how to fight because you don't have the word. You don't fight with your breastplate. You don't fight with your helmet. You don't fight with your feet shod. Okay. All right. The sword is the weapon. The sword is your weapon. The word is your weapon. The word is your weapon. Mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, I almost forgot this one. You also forgot <laughs> that your loins are girded with truth. Uh oh, that's the problem. That's the problem. Your loins have to be girded with truth. See how we can just bypass that? You, you, your hips, that's where the girdle is, right? So when you, you're playing sports and, and they tell you when you're watching the person, what you do, you watch the hips. Because where the hips go, they go. So where you believe, that's where you go. Y'all missing it. Your loins supposed to be girded with truth. God's truth. Not your truth. <laughs> where your hips go. Your faith go. <laughs> okay. You're trying to fight the enemy, right? You can't because you don't know the word. The enemy got you. He got you all mixed up. He got your helmet on backwards. He got your blessed prayed upside down. You got one foot shod. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There you go. <laughs> he got you looking a mess <laughs> and I'm saved I mean everything all back <laughs> up down I mean nothing come on going to battle Woo! my god you talking about let's fight you ain't got truth nowhere on you trying to quote the scriptures can't remember one. How come when we go through something, we never bring the word up? You know why? Because you're fighting in your flesh. He said, fight the good fight of faith. Okay. We see we quote it, but when it's time for us to actually apply it to the situation. Bring. Girl, you know what he did. They ain't doing this. He just all on the phone. Ain't go to the word at all. Then you hang up. Amen. We ain't amen. We ain't amen in about. So be it. See you at prayer. They ain't went to the word. Just cussed them out. Flesh everywhere. Mm, 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 mm. How many have road rage? See, I put my hand up. I got delivered from that. I got more practice in that. Just take another thought. It's trying to help you teach take not being your flesh. How many of y'all been real mad and you know you ain't got no gun but you bend down like you're ready to do something? You that mad. You that mad. I had like, you know you ain't got no gun. You got the instruction manual in your glove compartment. You acting like you bad. Uh, come on, brother. <laughs> Versus, I got my piece. I don't, want you. I don't know about you, Pastor. Okay, here we go. <laughs> this is another crazy thing. That one little thought could change your whole life. Because they might have one. 
and follow you home. Yeah, you driving all around, you got but a quarter tank. Okay. <laughs> you trying to outdo them. They still follow you. They turn, you turning. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go, y'all. <laughs> I've done some crazy. Anyway, anyway, how you do some crazy things? Listen to this. Okay, here we go. All right. I'm just, see, I'm being real with y'all. All right. <laughs> I need the people to get the word. Amen. Remember, Satan's power comes from your ignorance. He cannot destroy if you know the word. This is why we must eat the word for our spiritual strength. Man, this is why we must walk in love. Because that, listen, because that's what keeps listen, our armor on. Oh, that's what keeps your armor on. It's love. It keeps it not in not only on but in the right position. Okay, that's what love does. The minute you remove the armor, <laughs> the minute you remove the armor, or have it listen on the wrong way, the enemy comes to tempt you. Then, the minute it's on, or okay, or opening, that's when he comes to tempt you, because he works through your flesh. All right. Now, those fiery darts can come in now to listen, to afflict you. Afflict means to cause pain or suffering or illness, to cause trouble. Mm. Woo. John, listen, John, uh, God told John to eat this word. He told Jeremiah to eat this scroll. Why? Because the word has to be in you. Let it become a part of your substance. Let it be, listen, let it be part of your breathing. Let it be part of your thinking. Let it be part of your seeing. Let it be part, listen, of your hearing. Let it get inside of your heart. See, this is the part he gives us. Because if you truly are saved, listen, because you are, if you are truly saved, then he's going to come one day. No, if you're truly saved, He's going to come like no other time ever when you're weak, when you're emotional, when you're in mental distress, your armor is not on. You're not operating in love. Oh, he's coming. See, you can't be ignorant, husbands and wives. We keep saying we understand, but he's like right there. Okay, let me help you with something. He comes. Luke 23. No, Luke 22. 31 and 33. That's a preacher right there. He's correcting me. Luke chapter 22 and verse 31. And 32. Simon, Simon Peter, listen. Satan has asked excessively that all of you be given up to him out of the power and keeping of God. Y'all can't just go past that. You can't just go past that. Start that over again. Simon. Simon Peter. Look at that. Listen. No, you, you forgetting. What's that behind listen? Comma. Okay, what's behind listen? Exclamation point. And what that mean? Emphasis. Emphatic emphasis. Oh, it's time to pay attention. Okay? Come on here. Satan has asked. Excessively. See, he has to ask. Who is he asking? For what you're going through right now, what you got upon you. Who he asks, can I do it? And God said, sure. You said, they said they love me. They said they're obedient. Sure. Go right ahead. They said they're faithful. Sure, go right ahead. He said, don't y'all miss that. He has to ask. And you let him in with your disobedience. 
Come on. Let's do this thing. Listen. Oh. Satan has asked excessively that all of you be given up to him out of the power and keeping of God. Excessively? So you must be somebody then. Dejo. You, must, you must be somebody. You must be somebody if he's excessively asking about you. Come on. Come on. That he might sift all of you Ooh. like grain. 32. Verse 32. But I have prayed especially for you, Peter, that your own faith may not fail. And when you yourself have turned again, strengthen and establish your brother. See there? Now, this is a whole teaching that I don't have time to get into tonight about when Peter turned and when God, when Jesus prayed for him. And he turned and said, and you see, this is what happened. When we turn from our sin, you're supposed to get somebody. And understand what they're going through. You yourself. Okay, we, we, see, we just do the scripture all wrong. I'm going to make sure we bring some clarity in here. Okay, okay. Whew, I, I, I can't go there right now. I got to, we must remember to use the right scripture for the right attack that Satan brings to us. You can't use the Lord's prayer for casting out demons. You know, like you see your brothers in Catholicism do. Demons spitting around, turning all this stuff, and you talking about something. They do, I walk through the fat you know, come on. That's not the prayer. He's counting on you doing that. What's going on? The prayer is come out dumb and deaf spirit. Uh -huh. See, and this is what you won't do. Keep. Okay, I'm going to help us with something right here. You won't say come out unclean spirit. Okay. See, we, we're afraid. Okay. Listen to this. Satan power and his strength comes from our ignorance. Listen to what I just said. Satan power and strength comes from our ignorance of him. Paul said, know his trick schemes, attacks, adopt. know him. Know his game plan. Know what's on your bloodline. My question is, do you believe in Satan? Do you believe in Satan? Because the world is filled of people who don't believe in Satan. This is what they say to us. They say, do not, he, do you really believe in God? This is what they say, do you really believe in God? You got people sitting right here. Do you really believe in the Trinity? Do you really believe in the word that it's the sword of God? Do you really need to read the word? <laughs> or should we just keep faking it like we've been doing it all the time? He's counting on that. He's counting on you not picking up your word. He's counting on you not walking in love. He's counting on that. Mm -mm. The word says that, or the world, should I say, says that the concept of the devil comes from, you know, this is what they say, it comes from like pagan mythology. You know? You know, with horns, you know, pitchfork and tail. This is how they, you know, this is how they say it. Right? Y'all hear that. And people believe that. He's been reduced to some strange, you know, um, archaic idea. He's been reduced to that. Not from the Bible. See, the, Jesus spoke to him. He talked to him. He cast him out. He, no, he real. He sure did. The world has created a concept of uncivilized men's answers for evil. This is what they use, the devil. It's just a concept from, you know, uncivilized men. You know, fear. We'll just make up the devil. Right? Y'all people believe this. Mm-hmm. And that idea is fading away. Watch this. From the minds of men. 
This is what he's counting on. So he can work right in plain sight. Do y'all hear me? Listen to this. Listen to this. Listen to this. Don't get distracted. Listen to me. He's fading away the concept of the enemy. Okay? Hey, watch this. He's fading away in the minds of men. He's counting on that so he can work, listen, right in plain sight. This is what he's doing. So I'm, I'm trying to tell you what's happening. He's working right in plain sight. Listen to this. He said, no more hiding. <laughs> no more. This is what is happening. The more sophisticated our society becomes, the more freedom that Satan has. The more technology or the more technical we become as a society, the less he has to hide. Oh, see, y'all, y'all got to get this. Watch this. The more sophisticated we become, the more freedom Satan has to openly, listen, manifest without rejection. See, if you were watching, you'll see it. You're watching the movie, you'll see it. If you're watching what's going on in the government, you'll see it. Okay, okay. Abortion won't bad enough in itself. Now we can make the decision after the baby comes out. Well, what's happening here? What's happening here? I got the answer. Here's an example. So when a person is demonic or demon-possessed, we say that they are psychologically imbalanced. And that right there is accepted by society. So society is accepting demonic habitation. They're saying it's just an imbalance. Yeah. This is what they're saying with demonic oppression or possession. Yeah. Now watch this. This is how they're moving. That's what is accepted openly. So now it's okay openly to be demonically charged. It's okay. It's accepted. It's just a psychological imbalance. And we can counsel these demons. Okay, this is what's happening. See, some of you are trying to counsel your spouse. This is what's happening. Okay, watch this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now you have, now, now check this out. Now you have active shooters. Now you have active shooters killing our children, going into their schools, right? Now you have active shooters coming into churches, killing the people, Right? All right. Where's the uproar? It's just a little bit. Watch this. Watch this. A little bit, a little leaven. Just a little leaven, leaven the whole loaf. Just a little leaven in society leavens the whole society. Okay, watch this. Well, here we go. This is what happened. I'm, I'm going to use this one. Like parents. And this is real. They'll say to the actor shooter. This is what they'll say. I'm going to show how they set it up. They'll say to the actor shooter, they go back to his childhood. And his parents, they beat him. This is what they're saying. That you beat that child. <laughs> mm -hmm. Or you didn't bring that child up right. 
Listen, listen. Society now is involved. Okay, y'all, y'all gonna get it. You, you, hold on. You, you're not gonna go into like Sandy Brook and 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 Columbine and and kill all these kids without a demonic presence. This, this is what's really happening. That actor shooter ain't going to just go into that school just because he got a whooping. Because you didn't let them have a phone. No, it is an enemy behind it. It, it is being guided by an unseen entity. But we're saying it's okay. He's, he's just a little emotional. Psychologically, he's not in balance, you know. This is what's happening to the society that you're living in right now. My first cousin killed my mother's sister and her husband because they told him, no, you can't go into the Marines until after you graduate college. He's 18 years old. This happened in the 80s. He killed both of them, shotgun, sawed off, blew head off, everything. Because they said no. And they paying for him to go to school. She's a high uh, executive at Kellogg's, and he was a superintendent of the school system in Michigan. Because they said no. This is not just because they said no. It's demonically Charged. This would have to be. So now Satan has gotten into child care. Satan's in child care now. Y'all hear me? Satan's in child care now. You can no longer have the right to discipline your child in your home without the law getting involved. This is Satan's work. Now, watch this. I'm going to answer that question, too. In some cases, the law has to be involved. In some cases, the law has to be involved. That's right. It's like your parents, they, they, the lady going to jail, her and they locked all the kids up and starving them. No, no, they, they need to come in on this one. But not because I told you, no, you can't have a phone. Something's wrong. With society. And I'm going to help you. This is the last thing. Watch this. Hmm. All this because you wouldn't let them do what they wanted to do. Isn't that something? So if rebellion is legal. So if rebellion is, they're legalizing rebellion. Do y'all hear this? This is what they're doing. They're legalizing rebellion. It's the Satan's work. He's in the the daycare now. And no disciplinary actions are taken. So if rebellion is... Is being legalized and no disciplinary action, disciplinary actions are being taken. What Satan is creating is this a lawless society. This is what's happening. Just what you become a victim of. Mm. He's still in our children. Oh, this is why you can't be rebellious children. Okay, see there? We are steadfastly moving toward a lawlessness society. A lawlessness society. And remember, Satan is called the lawless one. So he's making a society conducive for his rebellion. And this is where we're moving. Fast, fast, fastly. Would y'all agree? Man, I'll tell you what. I want to do some more, but got to be finished. Listen.
Brother, you going to go ahead and get that set up, or did you already do it? Okay, and she's getting it done. And she's getting it done. Y'all enjoy? Yeah. Got some insight? Yeah. So this is what's happening. He's trying to create this realm where he can just have chaos. And guess where the chaos start at? In the home. If I can divide the home, I can divide the nation. My God. That's why we got to love each other. That's what I'll be trying to. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. What you mean? You want to move this out of the way? All right. <laughs> She's going to get that set up, and then we're going to show you all the thing for the app right quick. Are you learning? Yeah. I hope so. I receive another, another level of the understanding of learning. And learning is learning and understanding is not the same thing. So when I ask you all, so what did you learn? Learning or to learn has layers. So after a teaching or something, something is said, it said, okay, you have your own reasoning and you put it together, then you, you have your own opinion kind of start out and still have your own opinion about what you believe you understand. Then you have to come to a place of that you actually understand it that's void of your opinion. Then once it's void of your opinion, then you actually have to apply it in a situation. And through your experiences is when you actually learn. So you need an experience to learn what you heard. <laughs> so if you're not applying what you heard, you're not learning and you're losing. Yeah. Sounds real simple, right? But the question is, why don't we do it? It's like I'm going the wrong way and I realize I'm going the wrong way, but I continue to go the wrong way. Why don't we decide to go the correct direction? Anyway, learning. But with what pastor is teaching tonight, the question is, I always say, what is Holy Spirit saying <laughs> to me? So what is Holy Spirit saying to me? If we don't do that, we won't become who we are. The Word of God says, I've given you power, love, and a sound mind. At no point are you to be powerless. In no situation should you feel over come overwhelmed that you cannot <laughs> okay I have to go quick because I don't have much time it's giving you power love and a sound mind love is going to cast out all your insecurities the sober mind is going to keep you in line with the word of God we should be Strong mentally, physically, and emotionally because of what God has already given us. Amen. So what is, he, what is he saying to us about this teaching tonight? First of all, Jesus was giving, giving a task. He was giving something to do. He was given a task. And so are you. You don't recognize the things that you're dealing with. God has led you there. <laughs> I'm just saying. Until you really engage with the supernatural, you'll be fighting with each other. Jesus was led by the Spirit. So do you not know that the Spirit led you where you are? Oh 
He, le- he has led you into situation. He has led you to where you're at. It's a, see, we have trials and temptation. We have trials, but you have only one temptation. I'm going to explain that to you real quickly. You have many trials, but you have only one temptation. Do you recall Jesus having any other temptation? So you have that only one temptation where God, Holy Spirit, leads you. Okay. <laughs> okay, this is so good. Oh, my God. He's I'm feeling rushed. I feel like Pastor feel rushed. <laughs> and in that, see, with the temptation, it's layered. And this temptation goes beyond all your trials. It goes beyond everything that you have experienced. It, it tries every part of you. So we're talking about the, the body, the mind, so mentally, physically, everything. He was hungry, right? Everything. So this temptation is to test you, the wholeness of who you are. I mean, to its fullest. This is the battle of all battles. I was, no, 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 I didn't read it. Okay. See, but God has... When he was tempted by Satan, he used the temptation for his sovereign will. Everything works out for the good, for those who love the Lord. See, it, we say it, right? This is working out for your good because this is part of God's plan and purpose for your life. No, no, y'all see, yeah, yeah. See, but you have to know that you are led by the Spirit. We don't know that we're led by the Spirit. See, but Jesus had prepared pre battle. We are not preparing pre battle. He. Fast and pray. The fasting, see, see, it's more that your flesh have ascendancy or more power and authority than your inner man, your spirit. So he prepared, Satan saw him weak, but he was strong. And he was strong because he he had a pre-workout. See, so y'all, the fasting had the body to be weak. So my spirit man, look, look, see, it's one thing so my spirit man would be strong, but what you have to understand, the purpose of my spirit being strong, it was to check my flesh. No, y'all playing. There is, see, that's your checker. Okay, you better know. Is your spirit because it's been led by Holy Spirit. And it checks the flesh. But he had to crucify daily. He had to speak the word only. He was attacked. It was an attack on on Christ's humanity, but his divine part checked his flesh. Mm. Okay. Our source of our strength. See, he didn't realize when he said about the bread, 
turn the stone, turn the stone into bread? And his response is that we, we don't live by bread alone. What is he saying? And we say that. He said, I live by the source of the bread. Which is the bread of life. I live by the source of the bread. See, no, 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 see, I'm going to give you a different layer of the source of the bread. He said, I live by my obedience of the will of the Father. That's the source of the bread. No, 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 no. See, this is my strength. It's the source of the bread. And this is my obedience to the will of me obeying the Father, this is what gives me strength. See, it's your disobedience as to why I need another prayer. I need agreement. He is saying, I have the source of the bread. Which is, I need us to get it. Because start your strength. See, we're missing it. The, the fight, see, it's not a fight. Your only battle up is that you prepare before the battle. And that's in prayer and fasting. So I, see, and the fasting is a life of consecration of you crucifying your flesh by saying no. I live a consecrated life by telling my flesh no, which allows my spirit now to be led of the spirit. Oh, see, you know, y'all, see, y'all playing about how the enemy is to be defeated. See, there has to be no compromise in the word. There's too much. <laughs> Your mental capacity has to be expanded. That means you have to believe in the heart. I'm just, I'm going to have to end here. He said, watch and pray. He said, watch and pray, right? Watch and pray. If we would but learn the language of our native kingdom. We don't know the language of our native kingdom. Of our original kingdom of heaven. Watch and pray. Remain spiritually vigilant and deny your flesh. Remain strong in the spirit. This, that's our first Peter 5, 9. So that you can overcome the evil one. We're talking about the battle. The, we're, we're talking about temptation. And I don't believe Maybe a few of us are at that place of temptation. You have experienced many trials. But the temptation you have not seen yet. Because the temptation comes for everything you got. It comes for everything that you love. It comes, see, see, what's going to have to happen is that your children, you have to experience that your children turn their back on you. All those who say that they love you and walk with you would have to turn away. Oh, see, you're not at the place of temptation yet, but you've had many trials. We'll talk about this later, though.